really excited to have with us the head of their Tesla Semi program, Dan Friesley, who's their senior manager. Dan's been leading the Tesla Semi program since the inception, and he's been at the company really from the beginning. He had a number of other roles before he took up the semi leadership position, but this is what he's been working on. And I'm really thrilled to have him here to, to tell us about the, the, the Tesla Semi. Now, as we know, the Semi has been the talk of the industry since it was announced by Elon in 2017. And really, just that, a lot of talk. We haven't seen it. But I think that that's about to change here. We're going to hear some. Exciting updates from Dan on where the program is today and where they're going here in the very near term. Dan's going to come out, give us that update. Afterwards, I'm going to come back out and I'm going to have an opportunity to ask him a few follow-up questions. So, again, we're going to start with a little video and Dan will come out and uh, share with us the update. So, if you could help me, please welcome to the stage, Dan Priestley. Hello everyone. I'm excited to be here to share an update on the Tesla Semi thus far and shed just a little bit of light on what our next steps are. But before I do that, I want to acknowledge what a privilege it is to be here. I and my colleagues have an enormous amount of respect for everybody that gets involved in commercial transportation. You represent all of the people, companies, behind the scenes that are moving the majority of goods in North America. Thank you for involving us and doing all that work day in, day out. We look forward to bringing our experience with EVs and supporting infrastructure to tackle electric heavy trucking at scale. Now, I know, as alluded to, there's been some questions on timing, but Tesla has a specialty, and that is turning the impossible into merely late. <laughs> and I think that there are some narratives that seem to think that electric heavy trucking is still impossible. You might hear some say that it's really hard. Well, guess what? It is really hard. We've been doing it, but it is absolutely worth doing, and we do not enter this industry lightly. So, let's talk about the product. Now, we've shared some details over time, but we've always, uh, have, I've never really countered the common refrain that is, battery electric trucks are too heavy, they can't get the job done. We understand that maximizing payload is key for customer success. We put this truck into our own uses. We have max sensitive customers. We understand this. Now, one thing I want to call out is that the numbers you're seeing on the screen, these are tear weights that are attainable in our high volume production product based on the learnings we've had thus far. This does not include the 2,000 pound allowance that EVs had, and this is a standard configuration. You'll notice the high arrow fairing that's meant to match the drive down. And we're also using dually type. So there's some more levers that we can pull, but these are very attainable numbers for these ranges. And achieving strong range to mass ratios is only possible with a dedicated, purpose-built, ground-up electric platform. Exactly what the semi is. There's no wasted space. The powertrain and the vehicle work hand in hand. We saw this on the light duty side, and we're seeing it all over again on the heavy duty side. Now, one of the other common refrains that we hear on the electric heavy truck side is that charging. Charging is really hard, and the refueling time is insufficient. Well, we've demonstrated that megawatt-level fast charging is available, reliable, safe, and unlocks the next level of economics. We have this deployed in the field today and are actively using it. What this does is it unlocks operational equivalents between diesel and electric. There's none of these ratios that you need extra electric trucks to do the same amount of work that diesels do. They can swap one for one in operations. Earlier this year, or last year, PepsiCo demonstrated publicly in the run on last demo that they can do more than 1,000 miles in a 24-hour period. Fast charging enables that. Oh, and by the way, like more than 60% of those miles were above 70,000 gross combination weight. These things are going to work. So with that, 
How have these trucks been put to use? 3.5 million miles accumulated to date. Now, we're putting our money where our mouth is just as we said we would, and we have introduced the semi into our own supply chain and operations. The most notable example of this is hauling battery packs from our factory at Gigafactory Nevada down to support our Fremont factory operations in California. Two years ago, this route was 100% diesel. We are now electrifying it. This is a long distance route, one that is challenging. It goes over Donner Pass on I-80, so we see a lot of mountains. We also see a huge variety in climate and conditions. You see cold in the winter, we go over, we chain up. You see the hot summer, you see urban traffic, you see highway speed, we're going 70 miles an hour out in Nevada. We are able to do this because the truck is, has adequate range, proper infrastructure to pair with it, and a vehicle mass that allows for one-for-one -one payload parity. But you get all of this at a lower operating cost. That is the beauty of electric heavy truck. So we've got fleets that are running this truck. We have them in operation, but how else has it performed? Well, electric, one of the beauties of it is efficiency. Now this is a conventional 2009 diesel, but the world has evolved. There are programs like Super Truck, even Super Truck 2, where freight tonnage, freight efficiency, how many, what your ton MPG equivalent is, how does this compare? Well, Super Truck 2 is a, like, they're hitting their targets, so the various uh, folks are participating in hitting the targets that were set out. But last year's Tesla Semi Fleet outpaced it. And if we load up the vehicle to max weight, we crush it even farther. Electric is efficient. It allows you to move more goods with less energy, plain and simple. And we want to take that and use heavy or fast charging and take that difference in cost and greater efficiency and push as many miles and tons through that to get you the absolute fastest economic payback possible. Now, when it comes to freight movement, like we're pushing weight. So our chart on the left is a nice histogram of our ton miles at various gross combination weights. And we are spending our time over the last year moving weight. These trucks are out there doing work. And not only that, but we're seeing the efficiency as we discussed we, as, when we have launched this product actually materialize. Across the fleet, we're seeing an average of 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. And on top of that, in heavy duty or heavy applications, a mix of like, out and back as well as pure heavy haul, we're seeing less than two kilowatt hours a mile. And by the way, the lightweight applications, they, they're down about 1.5. And just to be clear, I think there's actually a mild misunderstanding of how PepsiCo, who by the way, has been a great partner in all of this, has used their trucks. It's sometimes characterized that they're hauling chips, but in fact, it's actually the PepsiCo division that has more trucks and they're hauling beverages on a regular basis. So much so, in fact, that just starting last week, they started delivery of an additional 50 semi-trucks at their Fresno, California facility. Also deployed there is mega charging to support it. It's great to see that commitment and further increasing the population of the vehicles throughout this year. Now, it's one thing to run trucks. It's another thing to keep them running. This year, this Tesla Semi-Fleet has seen an uptime of greater than 95%. Now, this includes both preventative and unscheduled maintenance. Just like we have had a pilot semi-truck fleet out there doing work, we have a pilot group of service technicians that are supporting these vehicles. We are leveraging all of the learnings that we've had from our passenger car side, where we support service in-house, in order to stand up a complementary heavy-duty service. Now, when we go to scale, this will continue to evolve. We are going to leverage Tesla's vertical integration. We're going to leverage the fact that we develop our own service tools in-house. We do our own training. We develop physical as well as virtual information to allow the technicians to do their job effectively and ultimately get the product back into the world earning money as quickly as possible. We truly understand that the key to key time is critical, and we are sandboxing and trialing all kinds of different things in order to ensure that these trucks get back into operation as fast as possible. In addition, we'll be leveraging things like our robust service parts network that we already leveraged on the passenger car side that we'll be able to scale further in supporting heavy charging. 
So this pilot fleet and everything that goes along with it, infrastructure, service, et cetera, has shown that we are technologically ready. Electrification can be done. Now it's time for scaling. So when we talk scale, we're talking big scale. We are building a factory in Nevada that is going to be ramped in 2026 with customer deliveries and ramping to an eventual target capacity of 50,000 units a year. Now, during this time, we're going to be updating the product. All of those efficiency numbers I just shared are all going to get better. These math numbers will continue to improve. And the, this scale enables vehicle pricing such that companies' investment is paid back substantially sooner than conventional fleet turnover schedules. Tesla's deep vertical integration also unlocks this. Now, keep in mind, we go all the way back, we refine our own lithium at this point. All the way forward to the final assembly and then into the world with charging and service. In addition, we're going to be flexing this platform to serve as many customers as possible with as general a tool as possible. We're going to look to enable other use cases, such as car volume, which we've had some fun with, as well as supporting electrified reefer trailers directly from the track. Now, charging. This is a common topic. What do we do about the scale of charging? It's important, and I, I just want to take a moment and make sure everyone understands, because you might have seen some headlines, you might have seen a bit of information out there about our supercharger number. I want to be very clear. Charging is core to Tesla. This year, we are investing more than $500 million in new supercharger stations, expanding the network. We are committed to providing our customers with the greatest supercharging experience. And we're going to extend that exact same train of thought into the heavy-duty side as well. We're going to make sure that every vehicle we deliver has an A charging solution supported. Now, that can come in a variety of flavors. Thus far, we've done behind-the-fence charging at depots, both at PepsiCo as well as our own internal sites. But over time, that's going to change, and there will need to be a public or retail infrastructure akin to what truck stops have today. And Tesla will find a way to support that regardless of whatever the customer needs to successfully run their operations. Now, Tesla still has a lot of experience. We've deployed more than 50,000 DC fast chargers worldwide to date. And we have really refined the way that we can do this quickly as well as cheaply. We've brought in some pioneering efforts such as prefabricated units. But on the cost side, we're continuing to drive down not just with improved hardware costs, but streamlining the engineering, procurement, construction aspects of deploying supercharging or deploying heavy charging. Currently, right now, you'll see a lot of numbers out there for charging for heavy trucks at like $1,000 a kilowatt. We see a direct path that at the start of our charging to support our high volume product to cut that number in half to $500 a kilowatt, fully deployed to the customer. So, scaling and deploying the requisite charging infrastructure is just one piece of the broader puzzle in the transition heavy duty transport to electric. We cannot do this alone. We put out a very similar call to action back in the early days of Tesla Model S development and deliveries. The transportation industry and the massive overhaul it takes to transition that industry cannot be done by us alone. We need the right partners. So we call on everybody to get in and do so in a dedicated, meaningful, and high-scale fashion. Be it the OEMs, please develop awesome products. Please develop purpose-built EV semis, EV heavy trucks that can go right up against ours. Please do it. On the utility side, we need to work on decreasing the time it takes to get infrastructure in the ground. Enable earlier planning. Synergize permitting. Oh, please synergize permitting. Align on common regs. Align on common infrastructure back end. Oh, please do this. And then to the fleet. Come with us with your enthusiasm. Share your route networks. Work with us so that we can figure out how we can best match our product and all of electrification into your operations. This is going to be an awesome journey. It's going to be hard, but it's absolutely necessary. I think you heard it from some of the previous panel members. The time is now, and a failure to act is a failure overall. 
Tesla is excited to be part of this industry. And we are equally excited to help lead the transition to electrification. The future can be clean. It can be lower cost. And frankly, it can be awesome. Thank you very much.